Hey everyone and welcome back. So today's video is actually one that's been a few months in the making really. I actually purchased this laser cutter back in March and I just hadn't had time to edit all the footage. So I've actually been pretty excited to show this thing off because for a 10 watt laser, I got it pretty dang cheap at 200 bucks at Micro Center. At that price point though, there are a few caveats, but that is to be expected. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick unboxing and then show basically what I was able to do after powering up the laser and hooking it up to my computer. So you'll probably notice pretty quickly that it is packaged quite well overall. I would say that Creality always seems to do a pretty good job with packaging. I've always been impressed with them and Bamboo for their printers and now for this laser cutter. They do include some basics, like they have the laser glasses, although I would recommend maybe getting some uh, well-rated ones uh, if you feel uncomfortable, because I have had issues where it still kind of feels like my eyes got a little irritated when looking at it for, for tuning the beam through these glasses. They also throw in some stickers and some reading material and a bit of balsa or base wood to test out your first cuts and engravings with. I actually have had issues narrowing down the exact uh, dimensions that you can use as a working area. It looks like technical maximum is 380 by 400 millimeters, but that doesn't take in consideration the tooling and where it bumps against. So there's probably about 20 millimeters in both directions that you lose because of the carriage. Ironically, it looks like Micro Center's kind of moved away from these models or is restocking them because I can't seem to find them online. I can only find the five watt version and it's only like a hundred bucks and it's out of stock. I hope they bring it back because this is a really good kit for the money from what I can tell so far and from some of my testing. Something to keep in mind though is it doesn't have a Z-axis, which kind of makes sense. You don't need one for most laser engraving applications, but for cutting, it's kind of nice to be able to change on the fly versus having to readjust between layers or passes. Although depending on how little of thickness that you're trying to cut through, Usually you can cut from the same exact uh, focal height uh, from, the, from the stock and it'll be fine with a couple passes. But some of the more high-end model lasers do have a Z-axis that lets you change it in software or at least manually t uh, jog it without having to stop the whole thing. But overall the general assembly is pretty straightforward. Like you can see there's only like maybe a dozen screws or so. You, everything's pretty much pre-assembled. The X gantry is done, so you really just have to put together the Y-axis gantry, or the Y-axis section of the gantry, and slide the X-axis onto it. And then you basically close it up with a couple more screws and add the feet. So they really were able to keep the general footprint of the box pretty compact, despite the fact that of the assembly already being done, for, most, for the most part. Now, for some of you who are more familiar with 3D printers than lasers, this thing uses uh, GRBL or gerbil or uh, whatever it's called as the communication language. And it actually does not use a slicer like a 3D printer would use. You use something more, um, there's laser gerbil or laser GRBL, and there's light burn as software that interface over USB serial communication with the module on the side. You can kind of see it over here on my right. There's some cables that run over. There's actually a mounted, um, assembly that has a little board on it with a USB connector and a power cable. And that's pretty much the brains of this setup here. And it runs all the, the, the two motors, it runs the laser, it handles the fans, and it deals with all the G-code positioning. My understanding there's an ability to run off the micro SD card, but from my experience, it was much easier to use it over USB from the computer just because you have a bit more control of how things are started and stopped and you can actually set up centering on the machine and, and your offsets and everything. Uh, there's even modes to uh, turn on and, and kind of prime and you and aim the laser so you know exactly where you are, you're keying off on, especially because there's actually no, there's nothing on the bed or on the gantry to lock against to as a datum point. For example, on a 3D printer, you're actually working off of the mechanical uh, points on the on the uh, system and you're 3D printing based off of that. But on a laser setup, let's say you had a picture frame or something, you really don't have the same opportunity, right? Because the picture frame could be offset funny. So you can correct a bunch of that in software versus if you're running off a micro SD card, that's not so easy. The assembly did take a little bit of time, but I also kind of avoided looking at the instructions since I thought I knew better. And for the most part, you really don't need the instructions. It's pretty straightforward if you've assembled something like this before. 
but it's always better to brush up. Now, while I get the last few pieces on here, uh, something to mention on this is the fact that it doesn't have air assist. So if you're not familiar, air assist actually has a, a different nozzle that gets replaced on the laser and it pushes basically like compressed air like you would have from an air tank and it pushes it out the nozzle to kind of clean out where you are cutting. Although that's probably less necessary for engravings, it does allow it to clean out and do a little bit better job, but for cutting it's a must for the most part. I've actually been working on another video showing air assist specifically on this machine and how spending the extra 30 or so dollars is 100% worth it. So these first initial laser etchings I've done are with a laser gerbil or laser GRBL and I've kind of sped it up four times because it does take a little while and you'll see that it kind of over overdid it. It kind of burned a little bit and even this one that turned out a little bit better uh, is not perfect. You can also see that one of them was barely noticeable. It was very light. Uh, laser uh, gerbil is just not a great software in terms of like granularity and optimization. It's it's decent and it's completely open source and free. But comparison to Lightburn, I've I definitely say it's worth spending the money for Lightburn. With the right settings, I was able to get some decent cuts with laser gerbil, but I wasn't able to get very good engravings. So I ended up using the trial for Lightburn to do some testing, and I can justify the purchase for it. But I look forward to doing some more experimentation and showing you guys the difference with air assist and without, as well as showing uh, light burn versus laser gerbil, and really just kind of getting up to speed with some of the opportunities this setup allows for. I definitely won't be doing any more without a vent hood in here. Overall, for the first stab at these, these don't look too bad. I think the last one actually turned out pretty okay. Well, I hope this was informative, and I'll see you guys next time.